Welcome back. Today we're going to be going over notifications, where you set them up, how you customize them, and how you use them inside Shopify. So let's jump into it. All right, let's talk about notifications inside Shopify. Now, for every item that happens inside Shopify where you're communicating with a client, so for example, an order gets processed, fulfillment gets processed, um, the abandoned carts, for example, there is a notification that's set up so that they can get notified when things happen. Now, there are two places to customize the notifications inside Shopify. So if we come into the dashboard and we go down to settings, we're going to find notifications, which is right in the middle of the screen. Now, a couple caveats to keep in mind. None of the default notifications inside of Shopify can be turned off through the dashboard. So if you're using a third party app and they don't have uh, a way of turning off the notification through the API, then there is, they're going to receive two notifications in that case. So you want to make sure that all the notifications that you set up are the priority ones inside Shopify. So the one that gets set up is the one inside Shopify. And then if you're using a third party app, you want to turn off the third party apps notifications. You can't turn off the Shopify ones. So it's important to know where to go and customize them. So the first place you want to go and customize them is on the left hand side here with the customize button. If you click on the customize button, this is going to show you an example of what the notification is going to look like uh, before it gets sent out. Now, the first thing you'll notice is you have a couple options on the right hand side. Uh, you can choose your logo, you can change your logo width, and you can choose your accent color. Uh, I'm going to go and choose a logo here so that you can see what it looks like. And once I've added logo in here, you can see it's now updated at the top of the notification. The last, uh, the two other settings that we have is we can change the, the width of the logo if we want to, if we want to bump it up a little bit, we can do it like so. Um, and then we can change the accent color. So if we want to change the accent color, say I want to change it to uh, our symbol blue here, I can go and change it to that color, save the notification and away you go. Now. For the most part, that's all the customizations that you have inside Shopify in order to change colors and logos and to make the emails match your brand. And for most people, that's enough. But what if you wanted to change the content inside of the notifications? You wanted to add maybe a map to your store if you're doing in-store pickups, or maybe you wanted to add a customer service phone number for that example. So if you wanted to do that, you head back to notifications and on the right hand side here, here is where all the notifications sit. Now I'm going to warn you, when we go into notifications, it's going to be a little overwhelming at first. And the reason it's overwhelming is because it's going to be a, a mixture of liquid code and a mixture of HTML code. And I will try and explain how liquid code works for you um, as we go through. So if we have a look here at the dashboard, we have two tabs that start off on the top. We have email and we have SMS. For the time being, let's just work on the SMS side of things um, because it's shorter and it's easier to understand uh, the code that's going on it. And then we'll switch over to the email side of things and then you can have a look at how that comes together. So the first thing that comes up is it says hi and then it says curly brace with a percent sign. Um, and what this means inside of Liquid. So you can identify Liquid code by two different types of uh, declarations. The first is a curly brace with a percent sign. And this means that Liquid code is actually going to be doing some processing. So it means it's either going to be setting a variable or it's going to be pulling information and then doing something programmably with it. And then the second um, declaration that you'll notice is a double curly brace. So you'll see right after it here, we have a double curly brace. And when you have a double curly brace, it basically means that you're outputting something only. So you're outputting, uh, in this case, the order customer's first name, or you're outputting um, maybe the, the order item title and so on and so forth. So it's important to keep those two separate when you're starting to get into liquid code, because if you get them confused, uh, the system's going to think it's processing something when you actually want it to output something. So the first thing we want to do is we want to write um, an if statement, which goes around um, the customer's first name. And the first if statement that we have is an unless statement. So in regular programming, if you have an if, you have an end. So if something is true, do this. 
In Shopify, because you don't have an operander that is uh, is not equal to, you only have the equals operander, they have created an unless statement. So it's the opposite of an if statement. Unless the order confirmation, of uh, the order customer's first name is blank. If it is blank, skip it. So if they didn't fill out a first name, it's just gonna say hi, and then it's gonna put a comma in there. And then it's gonna say thanks for your purchase. And now we get access to our first piece of liquid code, which outputs um, some information. So it's gonna grab the order total price. And we have a little bit of a filter placed on top of this liquid code. So the filter is known as a pipe. So you put a pipe in there and you say money, which is one of the filters inside Shopify, which will render the order total price with a dollar sign after it with double dots. So giving it a nice clean look and you know that it's money. Um, and then we're gonna say from shop name, which is a variable inside of Shopify. Um, and then we're gonna get to our first if statement. So if the order requires shipping, um, so if it is a physical product and not a digital product, um, then it's gonna say, we'll notify you when it ships. If it's not, so this is the else statement of the SMS, we'll notify you when it's ready. So kind of different language around there, um, it, depending on which use case comes up. Okay, and then the final piece of the message is if the order has a status URL. So what that means is if the order has a tracking URL that they can click on and see where the shipment is at. And if it does, then we're gonna write view order, order name, and we're gonna put a colon, and we're gonna put in the order status, and then we're gonna end the end. And the fine, final thing uh, that we have on the text message is text stop, which basically is a um, link that gets passed in as a variable from the uh, Shopify system to unsubscribe. And that is essentially how you set up the SMS email notification. Now I realized that was a lot to go over and there's quite a bit involved when you start talking about liquid code in a programming sense. They provide you with a nice documentation on the right that goes over all the variables and what each one is used for and the use case for it. So if you're looking for a specific uh, item, say you want to list your discount, um, list your discount in your notifications, you have that event access available to you uh, on the right hand side. So um, let's head over to email for a moment. Now when you're in email, you need to be able to build in HTML with your liquid code. So what my recommendation usually is, is go out and build your HTML document in another editor. So use it in a WYSIWYG editor, maybe use the MailChimp uh, editor, which shows you how, what your code is gonna look like when it's finished. If you're not comfortable doing HTML code, um, you want to be able to do it in an editor first, copy the code in, and then go and swap out the variables. The other thing to keep in mind is in the email notifications, it says that assets notifications styles.css is the place where all of the styles are being stored. There's no way to access that. You can't get to that through the themes. So all of your styles inside your email notifications have got to be inline styles. So as you can see down below, we have style and then it starts off an inline style. So anything that you're going to be rendering inside your email has got to be an inline style. This is a limitation of basically email. Um, email browsers that show you emails are 10 years old. So we have to use a technology that is quite a bit older in order to be compatible. All right, so that is a basic overview of what notifications are. Um, there are notifications in here for all of the different types of uh, communications that you'll do with your customer. You've got orders, shipping, customer, templates, Templates is the notification that gets sent to you. So it gets sent to any of the recipients that are set up down below. You can enable desktop notifications. Desktop notifications is when uh, your desktop is going to show you a little window in the top hand corner, kind of looks like this. And that will enable you to get notified when things happen. And then finally you have webhooks. Webhooks we go into in another video. 
Thanks for coming by. I hope this was helpful. If it was, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if that's something you're into. And we'll see you in the next one.